Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. Hello, and thanks for watching Griffin Update. I'm Mackenzie Bose. And I'm Morgan Doyle. The show is a busy one as we put our elves to work. Elves, magic, Christmas, this is my favorite holiday ever. Along with the hot cocoa every night, one thing I can jump on board with is the Christmas light. My house is crazy in Christmas. Christmas trees, Christmas cookies, Christmas signs. Well, you're not the only one that's getting festive this season. Reporter Jessica Stallard travels to Plattsburgh to tell us more. Plattsburgh started this tradition where they could get the community together and celebrate this joyous holiday. Like every fall, towns have their fall parade. Plattsburgh, only 30 minutes from St. Joe, has what they call Forever Christmas. This lasts two days and includes a Christmas lighted parade, a Christmas bazaar with holiday gifts, treats, and games for kids. This event also had a train ride for kids that went around town. Don Poirier Melton has had a booth at this Christmas bazaar since this tradition has started. Uh, it's a small town community. There's a lot of people here. I know a lot of the people and it's a very good environment with the Christmas theme and everything. Yes, this is my favorite one to do every year, the Christmas really? one, yes. The community loves this tradition and they make sure everyone has a blast. This was Brooke and Sarah Hastings' first year going to Forever Christmas. Uh, family gathering and presents. Lights. What a great thing that this town committee has put together. As you can tell, the community loves participating in these events. Have a happy holiday and a great new year. This is Jessica Stallard reporting for Griffin Media. I just love this holiday and those lights. Ugh. It actually reminds me of an event we had here. Our very own Chase Merwin went to the Diwali Festival of Lights to showcase what it was all about. Through food, fellowship, and fun, Western's international students demonstrate year after year that religion and nationality mean little while celebrating the spirit of Diwali. Community members and Western students dance, eat, and laugh, celebrating the themes of light over darkness, knowledge over ignorance, and fellowship over religion. This year's Diwali celebration, held in Blum Student Union on November 8, 2018, was the Indian Student Association's fourth annual event. The festival at Western began to the rhythms of popular Indian music before event organizers explained the meaning and importance of Diwali. Students also stepped up to try their hand at imitations of popular Indian celebrities and stars. At the event, international students thanked President Robert Vardabedian for his ongoing support of the group and gave him a gift to celebrate his final official attendance to the event as Western's president. President Vardabedian said Diwali ties the Indian culture to his own Armenian heritage. As I was listening to the music as we came into the room, it certainly reminded me of my own culture, which is the Armenian culture. The music is, is very, very similar, so I feel like I'm back home in Armenia. One event attendee, Western student Ikachuk Wuanaba, says the experiences gained by attending Diwali and other cultural events are invaluable for anyone to learn. When you attend cultural event, it's going to expose you to some cultures you don't know, like their food, their dance, the way they do some dance, and it's kind of still education and it's knowledge gained. So knowledge gained is the rest. According to international student intern and event organizer Marcus Triplett, participating in events like Diwali allows students to better understand the contributions people from different cultures can offer the world. Um, I think it better prepares uh, Missouri Western students uh, as Americans um, just to be able to experience different cultures so that when they're, they are out in the work field, they're able to um, to embrace other cultures without uh, a, a mind that's closed off to what other people have to bring to the table or a mannerism or a personality. Local high school student Charles Moore says attending an event such as Diwali enables students to learn about international students through a unique experience 
rather than in a classroom. See kind of like more of a cultural aspect of like meeting with international students that you might not normally notice if you're just like sitting next to them in class. Traditionally, the Festival of Lights concludes with fireworks and the release of floating lanterns into the campus South Pond. But due to cold weather this year, Diwali ended with some more games and dances. This has been Chase Merwin with Griffin Media. Yeah, I heard it was a light of fun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> when it comes to fun, I relate more to sports, like how I run cross country, so I run for fun. Or how people play video games for fun. That's still a thing. Uh, yes. But instead of looking at the game, we're going to look at how it's produced. Reporter Sarah Zahari researched some games to tell us more. Video games dominate today's culture, growing into a billion dollar industry since 1972 when Pong was first invented. With its success, it's no surprise that many future animators pursue a career in video games. Here at Missouri Western State University, a group of animation students work to develop a video game of their very own. So we're making a game about a ghost and uh, basically we have two different light sources, and one kills you and one doesn't. So it's kind of a survival game, but you have to be smart and turn off switches correctly. Professor Peter Britton assigns each student a role in the creation of the game, a more collaborative approach than other classes. But before I allow you to jump into that fray, I want you to... Well, I've made my own level. Um, so far we're just doing a tutorial level. We're going to start doing the second level soon. Um, I've done the modeling, texturing, uh, lighting. And I just want to give like other kids that ability to connect with somebody because you can build a whole friendship with video games. As technology continues to advance, hands-on classes help future animators to succeed in a competitive and ever-changing field. I'm Sarah Zahari. I'm impressed. That takes a lot of thought and talent. I have to admit, I'm not very talented. You don't say. I've always struggled when it comes to the artsy side of things. I'm a big fan of art. The only art I do is calligraphy. Well, that's enough art for you. <laughs> but what do you say we leave the bigger stuff for the art students? Sounds perfect to me. Sarah Zahari went to the art show to showcase their talents. After most students and faculty have left for home, Potter Hall remains open one Friday night a year to host Missouri Western State University's annual student juried art exhibition. The building is transformed into a gallery that features students' sculptures, paintings, photography, and graphic design for all their friends and family to see. This year is Potter's sixth exhibition and is organized by Professor Rebecca Foley. So we hire an outside juror to take a look at the work and we look for somebody, usually in Kansas City, that's like an arts professional. I just like to see like how excited the students are about participating in it. Their friends and family come to the um, opening reception and it's just a really nice night. Students of all grades can participate and many have been involved for multiple years. This is my third Jared Art exhibition I've been in, so it's my third consecutive year. I feel like this is the best opportunity on campus for students to get their art accepted into a show. It's free to enter, and then it's only students. You're not competing against any outside sources. It's a great way to, to show off your work, um, to kind of have, see how people react to the, the work that we do as students. Um, it's also a great way to just kind of mingle, socialize, things like that. With these close to life experiences, students get necessary practice for their future efforts as artists. I'm Sarah Zahari, and this is Griffin Media. People are seriously so good at artwork. I really don't get it. Yeah, I think I'll stick to the more contemporary side of things. What do you mean by that? Well, I don't know how much you know, but the Mystics aren't the only dance team here on campus. I like dance. Tell me more. <laughs> well, Jordan Alford created this company on campus, and they are making some noise. Check out what she had to tell me. Looney Complex isn't only home to Missouri Western's basketball team, but it is also where the Missouri Western Dance Company finds their beat. Jordan Alford created the Missouri Western Dance Company in October of 2017 when she was just a junior here at Western. In order to join the team, you have to go through tryouts and get selected. Well, I felt that we needed something that um, had a lot of diversity. I wanted to do something that had um, 
more than like a palmy or hip hop style, but I like to incorporate like jazz and tap, um, lyrical, praise dance, all types of other styles. So I thought that we needed an outlet for that where people can really like showcase their talents. Dancing isn't the only thing that Jay Alford juggles. Um, honestly, it's a mess. <laughs> um, this is the first time that, um, it's my senior year, and so originally you could get by doing it with like gen ed classes and things like that, um, but I'm not going to lie, this semester kicked me in the butt. Um, I have two jobs. I work as a student ambassador, and I work in the Center for Student Involvement as a programming assistant, and then I also do this um, about 12 to 15 hours a week, as well as taking 15 credit hours, so it's day in, day out. My day starts about 7 a.m and then I don't get home till about 11 and then try to do homework till like three and then like I've been running on like four hours of sleep. One of the dancers says it's not just practice but more of a family setting. She's so relatable and because like she's a student too so like she understands our schedule and then like she's just funny and like really fun to be around so it's not like it's just like oh come to dance it's so strict like it's like a it's like a playground with like all my friends. On a team you get close but dancing, you guys sink to the same beat. I expressed to her about um, actually being a member, and then I became a member, and then we finished off the rest of that semester, and it was it was a blast, and it's really like fun to me. It's a family feel. It's uh, everyone everyone's really close. Starting this as a junior, she knew she would have to give up her reins, but she is confident as the direction the company is going in. I knew it was going to come and go really quickly, um, so go, moving throughout practices, I always watch who's a leader and look at who's ever um, willing to help outside of practice with, you know, some logistical things or just getting things ready. Um, I have a couple people in mind that I'm looking at and I've already spoken to about passing the baby along, um, but I know that when I leave it should be in good hands, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, I will be worried about it a little bit, but um, I trust that it will be in very good hands. Dance like nobody's watching, and if they are, make sure they remember you. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Mackenzie Bose. That looked like so much fun. I'm really jealous. <laughs> well, they're hosting tryouts again after we come back to school. Maybe you can join. If anyone is interested, you can contact Jordan Alford so she can tell you more. One out of every four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. Wait, what did you just say? You heard me. That's better keep your eyes on the road. While the year is wrapping up, seeing as we're already in December, and finals week is just around the corner, if you haven't been to the Center for Academic Support, now might be the time to go. <laughs> Reporter Caleb Marriott met with some students and tutors to explain how this can help us. If you're a college student at Missouri Western and are having trouble with your classes, you might consider heading over to the Center for Academic Support. Tutoring for every class, like, and if we don't have one, then we find one for those classes. It could be art, it could be chemistry, it could be math. So we have that ability here at the CAS to either find tutors or have tutors already for those classes, and it'll be for free. Provide tutoring in math, writing, content, and then we also provide supplemental instruction. So math is our most utilized area. People come in and do a lot of math yeah. here. We have a lot of math tutors. The CAS is hosting a math finals preparation session the entire week before finals. But then we also are offering math review sessions for Math 110 and Math 116. So December 3rd through December 6th, we'll have two hour sessions for both classes where we'll review different units throughout the semester and we'll look at each unit individually and we'll do sample problems and there will be tutors there to answer questions and help out with them and then work the problems through with them. Um, sometimes what we do is we make up new problems on the spot so we can try and make them see 
different ways of solving a problem like that and then they can do it on their own. They also offer tips for every student in order to help them succeed for finals. Sleep. Make sure you're getting your sleep. Make sure you're eating. Don't stress yourself out too much. Like you have been preparing for this all semester without realizing it. You know, doing all of your homework and reviewing for each exam that you have in the class is all going to build up to helping you with these finals. So don't panic. Go in feeling ready, and you'll do great. Okay. This is Kayla Marriott so, with Griffin Media. This is basically them saying these are the key words. It kind of gives you an idea. I completely understand the stress and everything coming to an end right now. Me too. I'm already stressing out and finals are next week. Yeah, but this is our last show of the semester and just like us, Griffin Yearbook is wrapping up their year. Reporter Lance Lawton has more on what the yearbook is all about. To record all of Missouri Western's historical events is a big honor and the Griffin Yearbook has happily been doing it since 1915 when campus was called the St. Joseph Junior College. Today, the yearbook staff works hard every week, each semester, to provide high quality content in both stories and photos. Whether a story is about an important speaker on campus, or how football performed in the fall, or some other type of event that students need to hear, staffers interview and take pictures of every subject to add to the next year's book. Editor-in-Chief Bethany Fonsegern explains how exactly the yearbook staff works. Okay. The yearbook is a magazine type publication and what we do is we do interviews, take photos, we basically put spreads together over 248 pages that describes the year and the life of being a student or a faculty member on campus. Um, our staff ranges in terms of what people's majors are and we really just kind of use their attributes and what they're good at and let them focus on that. All editors work together to make the workload less stressful for each other and the staff members. They also support and encourage the students on the staff to help ensure that they are assigned weekly stories and are completing their articles and photos. Drew Agus, Griffin Yearbook's copy editor, talks about his role on the staff and how it has affected his outlook on working with the staff. I go through everyone's stories, I proofread them all, um, I make sure that they're good from a grammar standpoint, from an Associated Press standpoint. Um, and I make sure that they flow well and they go with the theme of the yearbook, what we're wanting. The best part has definitely um, been seeing those students grow, the students who have lower skills or had lower skills at the beginning of the semester. Being able to see them grow into good writers has been really, really cool to see. Since the yearbook is taken as a journalistic publication, the staff is held accountable for handing in their work on time. According to Von Segern, Meeting deadlines and managing time are some of the more difficult aspects of putting together the yearbook. You have all these various pieces that need to become cohesive and work together and also a team of people that may not know each other or they're just learning to work together and just getting it all done. Manage your, your time not only doing that but also getting your interviews done and making phone calls, follow-up emails and things like that. When all those are added together it really becomes a little more difficult, especially on top of being a student. Von Segern believes that even though having different minded staff members can be challenging at times, it is still better to work as a team to accomplish various content. Our team is really diverse. I mean, we're all in different grades, different ages. We also have different professional backgrounds and attributes we can bring to the table. And so that can be difficult, but I think that our team really does a great job. We communicate well, we are very open to new ideas, and basically we kind of feed off of each other and those creative thoughts, and that has really helped this upcoming book be as successful as it has been. In previous years, the Griffin Yearbook and its editors have won national awards from the College Media Association for design work, writing, and photographs. The yearbook team has traveled to New York City and Louisville, Kentucky to show off their student-produced book against other higher division yearbooks from around the country. Because we are, are one in possibly 50 universities in the country that still have a yearbook, it's really prestigious. Um, it's an honor to know that our quality of work is that successful. Um, recently we won Best Cover, um, we were in the top for theme development, and so to be part of that is just it's almost humbling and just knowing that you're learning something and that you're achieving your goals as a student. 
As the end of the fall 2018 semester nears, so does Von Segern's term as editor-in-chief. While leaving the yearbook behind makes Von Segern a little emotional, she says that she is still grateful for the opportunity to work on the staff and is hopeful for the yearbook's future. Being part of the yearbook really defined my college experience. Without it, I really don't know who I would be as a PR or journalism major. Leaving that behind will be tough um, and facing the real world, but I know that I'll have a lot of great things to show for it. I know that I've worked with a lot of great people and that the team that I'm leaving behind is going to succeed very well and they're going to do great. And I think that it's going to be really awesome. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Lance Lawton. 248 pages is a lot of work, but I'm glad that we have a yearbook staff that can get it done. Yeah, agreed. Well, you know what to do now. Stay tuned for the Griffin Newscast and Bailey Sports Report after this. On my honor, I will never betray my badge. My integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for my acts. I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. Straight ahead on the Griffin Newscast, theater and cinema students put on an end of the semester show. We have a recap of last weekend's Short and Sweet. Plus, we highlight the communication students whose presentation won an award. Those stories and more are coming up. The Griffin Newscast starts now. Student Government Association is making some big changes to their constitution. Reporter Jake Hudnick was at their last meeting of the fall semester and filed this report. On November 30th, SGA adopted a new constitution by a student body vote that outlines powers in the judicial branch and clarifies language in some areas. If they're left to be interpreted with poor language, then they can be interpreted incorrectly or nefariously. The constitution passed on December 3rd in the recent SGA meeting meeting held this week. It was open to the students because the Constitution requires it. I'm a political science major myself, so I believe in as much involvement as possible in democracy. Chief Justices are not required to go to SGA meetings. They hold their own meetings instead. There is no qualification that exists to be a Chief Justice, such as having to serve on SGA prior. And actually, there's not even a qualification for a president or a VP as it currently exists in the Constitution either. Prime example, I was not a member of SGA before. First and foremost, I hope that the Constitution is lasting. I'm hoping that other administrations don't have to go in um, near the end of the semester and amend it. I'm hoping that it's uh, a document that you know lasts over administrations and is something they can refer to. It should take a while. Amending a Constitution should not be something that can be done overnight. I would have liked to see it take less time, um, but as the saying goes, uh, the wheels of bureaucracy are slow moving. So uh, it is what it is. Um, luckily, it's, it's done now. Reporting from Griffin News, Jacob Hudnick. Western theater and cinema students had their work featured over the weekend. Short and Sweet was held in Kemper Recital Hall. The event featured several short plays and films directed by Western students and faculty. Each presentation was between 10 and 15 minutes long. The show was held four times, once each night from November 29th through December 2nd. We talked to a few students who were involved. It is the closest thing that our theater, cinema, and dance department has to a showcase of what the students are able to do. Honestly, I think for me it opens a few doors. It, it makes me more confident in my writing. One of my dreams has come to life now thanks to this experience. In case you missed out on Short and Sweet this year, don't worry. The event is held every fall. A research paper by Western Communication students won an award. Dr. Jordan Atkinson and his students, Madison Runkles, Maria Selby, and Taylor Wallace were part of the class project. It was awarded top paper in the Theory and Methodology Division at the 2019 Eastern Communication Association Conference. The paper was part of an organizational communication course at Western. It applied leader member exchange theory to the classroom. We spoke with Dr. Atkinson and his students about what the award means to them. It's the first time I had actually submitted the paper, a paper with a students as co-authors. 
So for that to win top paper, I was just overjoyed. I'll be honest, I never thought we would get close. I mean, I know it, it was very significant and it was a lot of work, but it was definitely, it was definitely surprising. The conference will be held in Rhode Island in April 2019. In case you weren't already aware, we're almost to the end of the semester. Here are some recommendations from students and professionals to help you do well on finals. Study in intervals and take a short break every 30 minutes to an hour. Don't forget to eat breakfast. Research suggests foods high in fiber and carbs are best. According to the New York Times, alternating the place you study can improve retention. Of course, time management is key. And if you still feel overwhelmed, you can get help from the Center for Academic Support or check with your specific department. And with that, we'd like to thank you for joining us on the Griffin Newscast this semester. We'll be back in the spring, bringing you the most important stories happening at Missouri Western. I'm Brittany Price, and that's your news in five minutes. Good luck on your finals and enjoy your winter break. I've been where you fear to be. I've seen what you fear to see. I've done what you fear to do. All of these things I've done for you. I am the person you lean upon, the one you cast your scorn upon. And the one you bring your troubles to. All these people, I've been for you. All these people, I've been for you. All these people, I've been for you. All of these people, I've been for you. Welcome to the Griffin Update Sports Report, your place to catch up on all Griffin sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum. This is the last show of the semester, so we thought that we would review some highlights of all the sports we covered this year. Fall sports are finally finished up as football had their last official game down in Arkansas for the Agent Barry Live United Bowl. They pulled off that final win against Southern Arkansas to have their first winning season since 2015. In other sports news, men and women's basketball have their first conference games this Thursday against Lindenwood and Saturday against Lincoln. Make sure to get out to the Fieldhouse to support. That's all we have for you today in sports. For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out GoGriffins.com. We'll be back next semester for plenty more sports. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12. You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage. Make sure you check out the next edition of the Griffin News. This is the last Griffin Update of the semester, but we will be back in full swing come January. We'll catch you then. For all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for following along all year and thank you for watching.